How the heck are you, everybody? I am Vestidius. Welcome to this week's edition of Should You Summon, focused on the 15x rate at Banner this Friday for Silas and Virna, and then the 15x by 250 exclusive guaranteed Banner for Lust, along with her husband, her partner, Arrogance. That's gonna be the focus, and holy crap, wow, this maybe will be my Should You Summon to end all Should You Summons because there's so much to talk about, so many specific situations to try to address each and every one of your concerns, give you information that's directly applicable to you and your, you know, bespoke situation, that essentially what I'm gonna do, and shout out to Maku, I'll put a, a screenshot up of the comment on yesterday's video that I made. He was like, for your should you summon, you're gonna have to make a decision tree, which he might've made, meant that tongue in cheek. I'm not gonna do a full, if you don't know what a decision tree is, give it a quick Google. I'm not gonna do a full like visual diagram decision tree, but I do think I have a ton of notes over here. I'm gonna take you through like a verbal decision tree, kind of being like, are you this or this? And then we'll follow that path, we'll follow the other, and we'll keep branching off. And I wanna try to answer like the should you summon question for arrogance and lust or Silas and Vienna or both for each and every one of you, which is a, is a tall task. I will say, if you make it to the end of this video, I do have a big surprise about a special stream tomorrow regarding all this stuff. And by the way, because there's so much to take you through in this video that I have to explain situation by situation, I'm not going to talk about the hero kits, the awakenings, the tier ratings. If you want all of that, earlier today, I made a big video I'm very proud of with chapters so you can skip around at your leisure, going deep into all four of these heroes, giving you all the information you need to know about Silas, about Virna, about Lust, about arrogance when it comes to their kits, their awakenings, their tier ratings, where they shine, where you need them, so on and so on. Let's freaking buckle up and let's get after it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Kicking this thing off with one big piece of information before we go through this decision tree, this verbal salad I'm gonna throw in your face, and that's gonna be what I'm calling the Kagiri Dilemma. To be fair, this doesn't really apply to like big spenders, content creators with tons of diamonds, anything like that, anyone who's been stockpiling forever, but to anyone that doesn't have hundreds and hundreds of summons and tens of thousands of diamonds lying around, you are going to be facing this Kagiri Dilemma. So what is this? Well, Kagiri is almost 100% guaranteed certain unless somehow this whole thing gets backlogged to Halloween and they do a Halloween champion and then he comes. He's almost certainly our next 250 limited exclusive. He should have been coming this weekend on the 20th. Everything is delayed up in the air, totally messy because the app store Apple keeps delaying updates of any real new content, real new heroes, and thus new banners. So we don't know exactly when he's coming. The short version of what you need to know about Kagiri, he's an extremely strong fighter, legendary obviously, who's in dual faction, Watcher, which has had a crazy glow up recently, and Nightmare Council as well. Incredible pairing, first hero in the game to be both Nightmare and Watcher. He stands to be unbelievable. He looks fantastic. I would say, not counting the partner stuff, at least as good as Lust. And I think for tons of content, he's gonna be the better end game option. That is not to say Lust isn't completely and utterly shockingly brilliant, and almost all of you that don't have her should be pulling this weekend. But we do have this Kagiri dilemma, because he could literally come, I would think, in as soon as two weeks. You know, the closest we've ever seen two back-to-back -back exclusive limited 250 guaranteed banners ever was during the anniversary, where we had Dahlia, and I believe just two weeks later was Nora. Theoretically, I would think that's the fastest that that could come. And it also could be he could be coming months. We don't know how long these update delays will be drawn out. So it's this big kind of amorphous, confusing thing hanging over all our heads before I take you down all this decision for every different scenario. This is just something I guys I want you guys to have in mind. So if you're if you're like a gambling man, if you have any risk appetite, I'd say I don't think he's coming sooner than a month. And even free to play, you should be able to save up quite close to the 250 you need even if you go for Lust now or if you go for one of these other banners, but it's absolutely something to keep in mind because it could be sooner. We sincerely don't know. He's going to be unbelievable. He has amazing awakenings. All the big spenders, big players, endgame players are going to want multiple copies, and everyone else will want at least the one copy. That's the Kagiri Dilemma. A final thing I have to mention before we get into it. 
the lust and arrogance banner, this invocation of oath over here, is only for your blue summons, your rare summoning crystals, not your gold divine legendary summons. So their rate up is only for that one type of summoning currency. The Silas and Virna banner, however, does come with the rare summoning crystal rate up with your blue summons, but also they have a separate banner, the divine banner, for your gold summons, your legendary summoning crystals. So this is a totally separate currency that has nothing to do with Lust and Arrogance. While there is overlap between the two different invocation banners, so that is an important consideration for your decision making, that's where your summons could get split in either which direction. When it comes to your gold summons, if you are interested in this banner, you're missing one or both of these heroes and you wanna go for it, which you should, if you're missing one or both of Silas and Vierna, do this first. Do your gold summons first. There's no reason not to, unless you're going to do one singular pity manipulation because you have plenty summons and you're going to rock on both banners. Otherwise, knock that out of the way and you might have your decision made for you bright and early. You might just be missing a Silas, just be missing a Virna. You hit that before you even have to get into your blue summons and your mind can already be made up on where you're focusing your attention. Let's take you through it and let's start answering the questions. Holy guacamole, should you summon? First question you have to ask is, are you a whale or a kraken? Meaning you're spending hundreds of dollars a month, if not a lot more than that. If that's you, we will actually be addressing your concerns because there are things to consider that will come at the end. So that's the first step in our tree. We'll revisit it. The next big thing is, are you free to play or not? Do you spend it all or do you spend nothing? If you are free to play, let's take a walk down that path. Do you already have lust? If the answer is yes, and you are free to play, unless you've been stockpiling for such a long time, you should definitely skip this banner. There is a caveat though, and that is, do you have arrogance or not? If you do not have arrogance, this is a great time to go get him. You won't be participating unless you've saved a bunch in the Lust 250, you'll essentially just be a 15X for Lust and a 15X for arrogance. But if you don't have that arrogance, he will really bring Lust to a whole nother level, if you already have Lust, obviously, in the scenario. But certainly, when you get arrogance, you're getting arrogance at his strongest form with his partner bond with Lust. It's a tremendous thing. Arrogance is such a monster of a hero. So if you're free to play and you already have Lust, but you don't have arrogance, summon on that banner. If you are free to play and you do not have Lust, the next question is, do you have 250 summons worth of rare summoning crystals and diamonds at the ready, or could you get there by the end of the event? If you cannot get there, then things are kind of confused, right? Because then again, it's just a normal 15X. Nothing's guaranteed until the 250th. It is, if you don't get Lust by summon 250, you were guaranteed to get her at 250. Up until then, it's just a normal 15X, right? So if you can get to that 250 and you don't have Lust and you are free to play, 100% go for it. As incredible as Silas and Virna are, you'll get them eventually if you're in the game for the long haul. I know it's crazy to say, but Lust, this is a bird in the hand. And as a free to play, you should always be taking that, right? She is guaranteed. If you can hit that number, you know you're getting an S plus new phenomenal hero. Before we progress very quickly back to the other scenario, if you do have Lust, you're free to play, but you don't have arrogance, but also on the other side, you don't have Silas or Virna. Now you gotta kind of weigh things because you're, if you're a free to play and you already have a Lust, you're not really Awakenings hunting. So you gotta make the calculation, assess your roster. Do you think it's better to try to pick up an arrogance to get the arrogance, the boosted arrogance through the Lust and boost your Lust or pick up a Silas and Virna? I'd say if you're missing Silas and Virna, go for that because there's two new super powerful things you can hit. I would also say if you have Silas and you're only missing Virna, go for that as well, because Virna seems really hard to come by nowadays. If you have Virna but no Silas, again, it's about risk appetite, because getting Virna Awakenings, it's not the most thrilling thing in the world. Her A1 is solid, her A3 is pretty good, but you would be specifically summoning on that banner, hunting for that first Silas. If you're willing to accept that and there's really one hero on the banner you're going for, then do that. I would say on the other banner, again, if you have Lust, but you do not have Arrogance, you kind of will win with both of them because getting Lust Awakenings, they're super rare, they're super special, they're a lot stronger than Mina's, that would be a win. And obviously picking up the Arrogance and instantly having those two super strong fighters bonded would be phenomenal. But to recap that last bit, if you do have Lust, but you don't have a bonded Silas and it is Virna you're missing, but you have Silas, 
definitely go for the Silas Virna banner, in my opinion, because the Silas Awakenings alone are so strong, even if you don't snag the Virna. Otherwise, if you have Virna, you have Lust, you're missing Arrogance, you're missing Silas, you gotta do a gut check. And also, a final thing I'll say, and this applies to everybody, but especially to free to plays, especially to low spenders, and especially to people kind of on the first half or the beginning portion of their progression journey, you know, if you're early, mid, or even the earlier part of late game, size up your account and see what you need. If you go to your account in one of these situations and you have Lust, you're missing Arrogance, but you already have like a Zila 2 and a Valeria, maybe you don't need the Arrogance as much as the Silas on the other side. Likewise, if you're missing Silas, you don't have the Arrogance, but when it comes to your Marksman, you have a Sargok or a Lucius or both, and you've got these other kind of top options, even if they're not at the level, then maybe, yeah, you go for Arrogance. So definitely have that level of perspective. Final thing to think about as a free-to-play, if you have all four of these heroes, regardless of Awakening, as a free-to-play, unless you have a super high appetite for risk, just skip both banners. I know that sucks. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 But just wait for Kagiri, wait for the next stuff, wait for Bubba, wait for Xena. As a free to play, I don't think you have the luxury to go awakening hunting. Let's go all the way back now. I think we went pretty deep in the free to play. Let's go down the next path. You are a spender. The next question is, how big a spender? And usually, you know, I go low spender, mid spender, dolphin, whale, kraken. The way I want to divide this up is just this arbitrary number, but it feels good in my heart of $60. Are you like a lower spender or a higher spender? Again, we're not talking to the whales and krakens yet. That will come at the end. But if you're in this range or maybe the range of spending $0 to $200 a month, are you in the $0 to $60 range or the $60 to $200 range? So that's going to be $0 to $60 is going to be the low spender, mid spender, and $60 to $200 is going to be the decent or big spenders, right? So if you're on that lower end, you spend, but it's 10, 20, $30 up to $60. The next thing you have to ask is, do you have lust? If the answer is no, you absolutely positively have to go for it. It is undeniable. The follow-up question would be, do you have the 250 to make it happen? Through the stuff in the events, the amount of extra spending you might do, even if it's not at a crazy amount, you can get yourself to that 250. If you don't have lust, you have to go for lust, in my opinion. Now this is where it gets a bit crazier and you have to make those decisions as these lower level spenders, but people still putting out a little bit of money. I think you have to think about where you are progressing the game and how you see your spending continuing over the, the coming period. If you're going to keep spending and spending consistently, even if it is only 20, 50, whatever bucks a month only to me, that sounds like a lot. But you know what I'm saying? If you're playing the game for months or certainly a year or two years over time, you are going to snag the non special heroes. The normal heroes will come. It might sound crazy, but in time, you will get them. You could always have the one missing hole and maybe you miss the Silas or you miss the Arrogance, but almost certainly the odds are in your favor. May the odds be ever in your favor. That you'll eventually snag all these normal, non-exclusive 250 guaranteed heroes. So at that point, you have to assess your roster. You know, if you're missing at one key piece of one of the bonds, let's say you have three of these four heroes, but you're just missing a Vienna, you're just missing an Arrogance or so on and so on. Obviously in the scenario, you already summoned four Lusts then I say go for the missing piece. You know, you will get them over time, but you might as well target now. You're going to have some continued spending. You're going to have some continued pulling aggression. I think that is the way to go. Assess your account, see what you really need. If we're going to be a little broader about it, once you get the lust, to me, the key thing is getting a bonded Silas and making that happen. That's what's going to give your account the biggest push immediately, especially if you're not already at that later part of the game or the end game. Going for that bonded Silas, that's going to be the game changer. Like I said, you're going to pick up everything almost certainly over time as you progress, keep spending a little, keep playing a lot. So if and when you're able to snag that first copy of Lust, if you're still missing a Silas or a Vierna or both, I say unload on that banner. If you already have Lust, you already have bonded Silas, you're only missing Arrogance. In my opinion, obviously go for the Arrogance, not Silas Awakenings, and then you, maybe you'll get some Lust Awakenings too. And then the final situation, again, you know, with free to play, I said 100% don't do it. If you are a decent spender, even if not a crazy spender, and you have a copy of all four of these guys already, you really got to size it up and think, again, it's kind of coming down to risk appetite, right? I think for, for most people, even if I was spending like 50 bucks a month, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. If I had all four, I don't think I would go for Awakenings. We know a bunch of new heroes, a bunch of good banners are coming. I would anticipate when they do get approved. And again, we don't know when it's going to be. It could be a week. It could be months when they do get approved for new updates, new content, new heroes and new banners. I think it's going to be like the floodgates opening. I think we're going to be completely inundated with tons of new stuff. 
And I think there is a chance if it does happen sooner rather than later, and you go now unloading on these banners because you want to scratch that itch and pick up some awakenings, you may regret it. So I just want to share my piece on that. I don't think it's an enormous risk, but I think it is an actual risk. So you have to make that call yourself. That's kind of where that saddles up. Let's transition now into our big boy stuff, the big spenders. So if you are like a whale or a kraken, kraken spending hundreds and hundreds, if not more dollars per month, and then whales being, let's call it 200 or $300 a month or more. So we're in a territory now where obviously you're pulling on both banners. The question is how much to pull where? The decision tree fork we're going to follow, the paths we're going to go down now, I'm going to split it up as are you going to be summoning more or less than 500 summons? That's kind of where I'm going to sneak it in. All right. That's that feels like a break point. If you're in that three, four, five hundred range, I think it's pretty simple. You do a singular pity manipulation. And I do want to say, by the way, guys, hopefully you made it deep enough into the video, even if you're like a low spender free to play. If you saved enough to put yourself in this class and you do have hundreds of summons saved, then this first part's going to apply to you. So if you have a ton of summons, you know, over 300, but less than 500, what you got to do, you pull on the lust banner, you pity manipulate. I'll have a pity manipulation for dummies video coming out tomorrow. And then as you build a bunch of pity there, assuming the summons work out well and you don't hit her early, as in before the 250 guarantee, because once you hit her once, the guarantee's over. Then you switch over to the Silas Virna, you hit one over there, then you hit your lust, right? That is like, that's exactly what everyone in the situation should do, in my opinion, unless you already have A5 Silas and A5 Virna, in which case, congrats. But for everyone going this pity manipulation route, that's what you should do. You pick up your one early legendary on the lust banner. If it's not lust, you keep going, you build pity. Before you reach the pity, as you've built a ton there and built a lot of guarantee tally on the lust banner, move over to the Silas Firna, hit something there, go back, hit your lust, then it's calm. Now you assess. How many summons do you have left? Do you have at least 200 or 210 or can you get there to get a guarantee on one of the banners? Can you get a pity? You got to look at your account and see what you really, really need. If you're missing any of the four, you go for the one you are missing. It's as simple as that. If you're missing multiple of the four, obviously you just picked up your lust. So if you're missing all three, for me, I would definitely just go and try to grab an arrogance. Why not? You already have half the pair. Go try to get the other half. Maybe you get a lust awakening. If you already have the arrogance, obviously you have the pair now. Go to the other one. If you have all four, size up your awakenings. Which is the next awakening that can make the biggest difference? If there's not something strikingly obvious like, oh, I need that A5 Silas or that A5 arrogance, just stick with the lust and arrogance banner. All right. So at this point, you probably have between 50 and 200 summons remaining. Almost certainly you're just going to unload it on the lust banner if you already are in that situation where you're not desperately needing an awakening for one of the three other heroes, the normal heroes. Now for the really crazy stuff, you have over 500 summons to spend, maybe the 500 number is slightly low. And again, dividing this as Kraken and Whale probably was incorrect because people could have been saving. And if that's you, let me know in the comments. But people could be in a situation without cra crazy spending, but I just think this situation is, is typical of the big spender. So that's why we're defining it as such. If you've got over 500 summons, basically you're guaranteed a pity manipulation, and then you're guaranteed at least one more pity, if not multiple. Maybe you're pulling hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times more, if not even a greater number than that. It's just all about sizing up the account. You know, if you're a big enough spender, you can unload everything and you'll have spent enough that you're stockpiled again when the new banners eventually do come. So I don't think there's such a risk for you. I think it really is about going through all the awakenings and see what you're missing. Obviously, if you've reached that point, you're at that level of spending, that level of saving, whatever, and you're still missing one of these four, so you haven't completed both bonds. Obviously, that's the banner you hunt on. If you're cushy and you're comfy and you have so many sums to spend and you really want to make a big end game kind of meta push, get some Lust Awakenings. Why not? At this point, we're kind of borderlining that crack in territory, or at least you've saved and spent to a level that puts you in that conversation. I think then you're unloading for Lust Dupes, or you could, you know, save it all and skip it and just go all in for Kagiri when he comes, or maybe you're going to do both because you're that level of spender. I think at this point, you don't really need my advice, but I did want to talk it through because there will be people that are free to play or low spender or whatever that have amassed, you know, 800 summons worth of crystals and diamonds, so on and so on. So guys, I think in the future, I'll probably have to visually do this a bit more to lead you down those paths a bit clearer. The too long don't read, the TLDR is, do you not have lust? If you don't have lust and you have enough summons to guarantee you can get her so you can get to the 250 mark, 99% of you should just go for it. There's, there's nothing else to really think about. At the earliest, she will come back on Valentine's Day, but who knows? Maybe there's a new Valentine's Day thing that's going to come around. 
I doubt it. I think even if they did a new Valentine's Day thing, they'd still bring her back. But, you know, something to think about. After that, you got to go back and listen to all the nuanced kind of things I said to the best of my ability. And uh, yeah, I really hope this does help. This is really, this has really turned out to be difficult. And that actually brings me the surprise I teased at the beginning. If you still have questions, and as I finish this video, I would assume some of you still do. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a live stream Q&A for these banners where you guys can specifically say like, hi, my name's John and this is my account and this is where I'm at and this is how much I spend. What should I do? And I will give bespoke advice. It will be like 45 minute to an hour long stream live Q&A where I'll go through as many of you guys as I can and answer your specific questions in all your specific special circumstances. So if you made it to the end of the video, surprise, you get to be a part of that or at least you know about it early. I will open up a Discord channel in my Discord, The Fast and the Cities. The link is in the description if you have not yet joined. We're coming up on 5,000 members, which is pretty dang cool. So if you haven't joined yet, absolutely do it. And there'll be a channel there. Let's just decide right now. We're going to call it Lust Silas Where to Summon Q&A. That will be the channel. Cool name. <laughs> not really. There you go, guys. I really, really hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. If it didn't, any of your ideas how to make something like this better, do let me know. This is like so amorphous and there's so many special situations I can think of in my head, depending on progression level, spending level, who you're missing, who you already have, that it really is difficult. So I'm hoping any gaps in the information I provided in this video tonight can be filled in the Q&A tomorrow. So please get your questions in. I am going to say, unless not that many people ask, but I think a lot of people will ask, if you don't put your question in the channel, I probably won't get to it. I'm not going to be answering questions in chat because I'd say even once we have like 10 specific situations posted, that's probably enough to last like an hour. And at that point, I'll be exhausted. Thank you guys so much. There's so much summoning to do this weekend. I hope you are stoked. I've been fastidious. If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Share with your mother and I'll see you real soon. Bye. Fastidious.